Hey, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this one, we're going to be looking over Future Press's Volume 2, the official strategy guide, the second volume of the official strategy guide. There's two separate ones for these, for the Elden Ring build book. This essentially has all the weapons, boss, enemy resistances, a ton of detail on it, even some builds included. We're going to dive into this. By the way, this is what I look like for anybody that was wondering. And uh, yeah, I'm here doing a book review. Let's check this out. Let's see what quality is. Let's see how good it is. And let's dive into this book. And here we are. This is Shards of the Shattering, Elden Ring, Books of Knowledge, Volume 2. We're going to dive right in. And upon opening, I actually posted this on my channel yesterday. We have several different photos, several different pieces of artwork from the game. We're going to be diving in right here. And this is Farrah Missoula. This was my favorite one here. I really like that. This is a really cool piece of art. And then we have, you know, different ones from the game. I think that's like the third church of Marika, maybe. And then we got Stormville. Can't go wrong with that. My favorite dungeon in Elden Ring. And then lastly here, I don't know if all the artwork's the same, which each one it might be because they might be a lot from the loading screens. And here we have the Volcano Manor. And this one's really cool too. All right, let's dive into the next step. And immediately on the next page, we have the affinities here. We have the status ailments and item types. And then of course, we're gonna get a table of contents. There's um, contents. There's an index probably at the end of this book as well, like there will be in the first one. So that's convenient. And the first one up here is the combat guide. And this goes into a lot of detail. It goes into PVP terms, PVE terms. I'm not gonna get too much into this now because I wanna make this relatively quick, but for the combat guide, generally speaking, it splits up PVE and PVP and talks about the different terms for each one. Then here, as we go into that, we have stuff like where it talks about strength and dexterity, intelligence and faith, and all the items you can use in the game to boost those essentially here and then we have arcane with obviously the different items there that can boost arcane then over here it looks like we have they're talking about vitality focus increasing items immunity increasing items this is all really good information to have to be honest this is definitely right from right from the get-go here we definitely have something that's fairly good quality i have no complaints so far diving into this book and I changed the angle on my phone here for you guys, but this is one of my favorite pages so far in the book. And it basically goes over all the different buffs in the game, what types they are, and what they do. This is something that's really convenient to have and definitely useful for Elden Ring. Someone asked about this, but yes, we have a bestiary, and this is awesome having this. This is going to go over all of the creatures in the game, every creature in Elden Ring. And what it's going to do is it's going to talk about all their different resistances and everything as we get into... The book here, as you can see, Godric Foot Soldiers. And then look at the detail. So much detail on what they could do, essentially what they can drop and everything. And the resistances are at the top for each enemy in the game. This is actually quite impressive. It takes up a lot of the book. And here you can see we're onto the Stray Hounds. As we go through this, we're going to end up getting a ton about all of the regular enemies in the game. And it truly is incredible to see this much information on single individual enemies. And there is boss information and stuff throughout here too. And it gives you a strategy for each enemy type and everything as well. There's strategies for each one. There's ways to make your life a little bit easier. And there's also the things that they're weak to as well, which is a big convenience if you're doing something like this. We have the ancient dragons here. This is a really cool part of this book. I, I like this. I like the idea of being able to see all the enemy types, Tree Sentinel there. We have so much information to go through just in the bestiary. This is pretty impressive in terms of what it offers. And yeah, continuing on, this is a large section of the book. Keep in mind, the bestiary is probably like a third of the book in total. It's a fairly decent amount, but we have tough bosses in the game and such, and it, it goes over all the different strategies and ways to take these guys on. That's, that's really convenient, in my opinion, to have a book like that that has all this information in it. And this is the type of information with resistances for regular enemies and even bosses that is unlikely to change anytime soon. And then here we have Radon, some of our favorite bosses. I think, and I always say his name wrong, but there's an interview at the end of this book with Miyazaki, and he does mention how Radon is his favorite boss in the game. He really likes the arena and the whole build-up to Radon, and I can't argue with that. He is a fantastic boss. 
in Elden Ring. Much like Radon, as you can see here with the Lich Dragon, as we can look at this page basically and see how much information it gives you. Preparation, environment, strategy, and then it goes through all different types of information on the bosses. I really like this. This is very, very detailed. Ah, uh, we knew she would make it in here. Let's see how much they have to say about Melania. And yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna definitely talk about how difficult this fight is, that's for sure, and what you can do to take her on. And there's a whole bunch of information on both her phases. She's no doubt an incredibly difficult boss and one of the best boss fights in the Soul series in general. And this is impressive. The amount of information on. and then the kind of hilariously <laughs> unnecessary stuff that we see here as far as the animals and stuff go it's just kind of funny to look at this one because it's like i don't know if we need to know you know i guess it tells you what they drop and that's important and everything but i don't know how much i mean i guess that's that's all there really is to it so that that's kind of a plus there because we really don't need to know sheep resistances and whatnot <laughs> as we're going through this and the next chapter seems to be armaments and equipment Starts right away with weapons and shields, and this goes into a lot of detail here. There seems to be something that's mapped out here, attack data, and then we're talking about requirements and then weight. Once again, fairly detailed. This is something, again, that I really like. I really like how much detail this has, how much information we're getting for the value of the book right now. It's not a bad price at all. It's definitely, this is definitely worth a buy, no question about that. And as we're going into here, sorry about my finger there, um, we are looking at different weapons in the game. It's going to go over the different weapons, essentially where you get them, and kind of how to build around them. It also has all the scaling for the affinities on every weapon in the game, and that's impressive in itself. And as we continue here and move on, we're talking even more about more weapons in the game, and... It's got everything. It really goes over them in great detail. The somber weapons, the regular weapons. It's pretty much got everything you need to know. The important fact here, though, is having this. All the affinity scaling. That's, that's really convenient to have that in one place. And here we have all the armor sets in detail. It goes over the different armor sets. Basically everything that they do for you. The resistances and all the different types of stuff that they boost as well. This is really convenient to have too. And again, a lot of information. The whole section on talismans is definitely something that I like. That is really convenient for me. I really like having that, that sense of knowing what I can use and seeing what I can boost and combine with stuff. I mean, I already have a good idea on a lot of stuff, of course, at this point, but having further information is definitely something that's not going to hurt. These are all here in a convenient place where it goes over where to get them and what they do. Now, it goes over all of the incantations and spells and everything. I'm going to skip that part because there's a lot to it. I'll leave that for you guys. The next up, though, that I wanted to show was this one, which is the Ashes of War section, which, again is super detailed and has a lot of information in it about the ashes of war where to get them and what they do there's also a section here on spirit ashes that goes over all of the spirit ashes in the game basically everything about them and what they do as well this is convenient too another thing that i really like about this book so far now I'm not going to spoil, I'm not going to spoil and get into any of this, but there's an advanced build section that you should definitely check out that has particular and specific builds for the games. There's several of them. It's not too packed compared to the rest of the book, but there's a lot here as well. And that's my final review for the book. I really like it. This for me is basically a 10 out of 10. It's as good as a strategy guide is going to get. It's hardcover. It's pretty heavy. It's good quality as well. Speaking of which, I'm not being paid in any way to promote this book. But I do like it. I definitely think it's worth a buy, no question. And if you are going to buy it anyway, I have the affiliate links below if you want to support the channel out too. In the meantime, be sure to sub if this video helped you and looking forward to the next builds that we come up with here.